Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up Show. I'm your host, Mr. BJ Matthews, aka B. Just before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Like, share, subscribe, all our videos. Also, hit the uh, like button as y'all come in here. Let's get it popping. All right, so car conversation with B. Jizzle is in effect. I decided to do something a little bit different. Let y'all see the view of beautiful California. Hey, West, 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 West Coast, the best coast. Yes, sir. We are back out here right now. It's approximately 7 15 p.m. West Coast time. I know people are all wrapped in this whole election shit. But um, I want to kind of give y'all, you know what I'm saying, some more, you know, NBA talk, hard conversation with Beat Jizzle. All right? Hard conversation with Beat Jizzle is in effect again. This is going to be there for the duration. I need to make this playlist so y'all can just watch one after another. But uh, I got some time to talk to y'all. We're going to be talking about another team. That's going to be the Philadelphia 76ers. Shout out to my boy Andre DFJ Hoops. Go follow that man. I'm going to put his... His, uh, his YouTube name in the title description But I want to talk to y'all about the Sixers Philadelphia 76ers right now And how I feel about them starting off 1-5 and five. Because Right now The Sixers are at the bottom of the Eastern Conference They're at the tail bottom of the Eastern Conference right now Okay Now it's only 6 games We know that it's the start of the season All that stuff right But a lot of people are looking at it, well, damn, the Sixers, you know, already, you know, are not, you know, holding up the part. What's the problem? You know, what's what's going on with the process? The process is malfunctioning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Joel Embiid is holding the team back. And, you know, Paul George is always, you know, not he's not unhealthy. And Tyrese Maxey's carrying the team himself. And they're not good up this, that, and the other, all right? So, you know, you got people saying that. I want to talk about my thoughts, Okay. Now, the Sixers last night faced the Phoenix Suns and they lost 116-118. KD hit a, a game-winning shot. The Suns have been playing that magnificent. They're second in the Western Conference. Of course, they're definitely, you know what I'm saying, playing out their mind. And they were in a battle with the Sixers where the Sixers weren't able to take the lead and win the game. Now, of course, the Sixers come and face the Clippers. Us tomorrow, and you know, at the uh, into a dump, I'll be there at the game. Uh, be Paul George's return back to the Clipper uh, to play the Clippers in LA, and um, I'm gonna get my thoughts about that as well. I'm gonna have my man Adam come on tomorrow, who's a Clipper reporter. He's gonna be coming and talking about tomorrow's game. So I'm gonna leave the thoughts about PG coming back tomorrow. I just want to talk about the Sixers in general. Now, I had the Sixers going to the conference finals this year. Right for many reasons. I mean, I ain't talked to them about them during the season, but I've talked to them all throughout the off season. Y'all can check out my videos. I talked to why I thought the Sixers as an Eastern Conference going to them and facing Boston, or they might face New York, or shit, it might be Cleveland. It could be a lot of different teams. The way Cleveland's playing right now, they're eight and zero, so we don't know. And they also got enough over there in Cleveland. I mean, get too much off track. The starting five, they got a great front court, great back court. And good role pieces to surround Donovan Mitchell. So they have enough over there in Cleveland. They got rid of JB Bickerstaff to compete and be in the conference final. So you never know. But I picked the Philadelphia 76ers. Okay. Now they're going off on a rocky start right now. Am I looking at them? How do I look at their team? And watching the game last night and watching a couple games they've played this season. There's a few things I noticed. Of course, first off, Joel and B ain't healthy or Joel and B ain't playing. So it's hard for me to evaluate them in a full scale. But what I can do is talk about the players that are on the court. If you look at the Sixers, you got Tyrese Maxey, who I've already told y'all, I got to look a little bit deeper this season. I have not watched Tyrese Maxey um, as much over the last couple of seasons because, of course, Philadelphia ain't my team. So I've been, you know, so caught up with the West Coast and the West Coast teams that some of the East Coast teams I've kind of, you know, way, fell by the wayside. But Tyrese Maxey was ranked the top 15 player this, uh, this season going into the year. And in watching him play, I still don't believe Tyrese Maxey's a number one or number two on a championship caliber team. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if a team is one in five like this and your best player is out and then your coach and the, the second best player in my opinion, which is Paul George, is out, you can't be one in four not able to carry your team because really 
top players are able to carry their teams. And the teams that, that the uh, Sixers have faced are teams like the Pacers, the Raptors, the, the, uh, the Grizzlies. Um, and I believe, I believe they faced this. Who they faced? They faced a couple more teams. But they ain't been able to have a winning record. And if you're Tyrese Maxey, who's a great talent, a great point guard, I think he's, he could be one of the best point guards in the league. But one of the, I think for you know being a championship caliber player as a number one or number two option, uh, it's a lot more than just being able to put up buckets. Now Tyrese Maxey had a great game last night, 31 points. He's you know of course he's quick as uh, lightning with the basketball. Has very very good skills. Has very good shooting touch, right? But. As far as being a number two option, number one option on a championship team, you should be able to carry your team even if your top players are not there. Joel Embiid, throughout the years, have missed games, and Tyrese Max has been able, able to carry. They have a losing record against uh, in, the, in the NBA with, with Joel Embiid not there. That's why they re-signed Joel Embiid. But I like Tyrese Max, how he is with this team. He's a great floor general and a floor leader. And I believe Kyle Lowry being there as well helps helps develop uh, Tyrese Maxey and his leadership, right? And speaking of Kyle Lowry, I like Kyle Lowry. I like the role players they have coming off the bench, right? I like um, the guy, uh, uh, Gijan Yushil, the guy from uh, French, the one that dunked on LeBron. He's a very, very good role player as well coming off the bench. Andre Drummond getting starter minutes is a good rotational player. Of course, he used to be a starter for multiple teams, the Pistons, the Lakers, the Nets, um, or the Pistons and the Lakers and uh, the Bulls. He was a starter for all those teams. So now you bring him over to the Sixers. He's a role player. He's a bench player behind him. When he comes back, that's a good uh, backup center right there. As a matter of fact, you can't get better than that. My only thing with the Sixers I was concerned with was that they're very, very small and they have a lot of guards. Reggie Jackson, Eric Gordon, uh, shit, uh, Tyrese Maxey, of course, but he's a starter, but they have a lot of guards out there. So for a championship team like Philly, you got to be able to have also utility pieces. You got to have the guys that are going to do the dirty work, and that's Kelly Oubre, and that's Caleb Martin. Now, Kelly's 6'6", six, six, and Caleb is 6'5". Now, I told myself, okay, well, in the Eastern Conference, a team like Boston, a team like New York, um, those teams, a team like uh, Orlando, who have long wings and actually offensive players, those are going to be matchups that Caleb Martin and Kelly Oubre are going to be up for. Now, both of those guys do not back down from anything. Caleb Martin came from the Miami Heat, which is, you know, a team that, or an organization that builds toughness and Caleb Martin, the last uh, couple years ago, was uh, talked about as being the conference finals MVP the year that they faced the uh, Denver Nuggets. And they gave it to Jimmy Butler. But Caleb Martin proved that he can play uh, on offense and defense. And I saw him yesterday make a lot of good, um, even though Kevin Durant, you know, basically is Kevin Durant, Caleb Martin shows he can compete and he can guard guys who are at the fourth position. And he showed, he showed that in Miami as well. I'm not so sure how much that will be able to manifest as time goes on. But I do think Caleb Martin is going to be a person that can be used at that fourth position as well as he's a great offensive rebounder. He's kind of like Josh Hart for the Knicks, right? So when you look at the Eastern Conference, the Knicks, you look at the, uh, the Cavs, you look at the Magic, you look at, uh, you look at the uh, Celtics, those are going to be the teams that Caleb Martin and Kelly Hooper are going to have to be able to guard the threes and or guard, guard the fours. You know, guard more of the offensive players. Right? Because you want to have Paul George focus more on the offensive end. Now, of course, PG is going to be able to have to guard, guard the other side too, which I think he will. But it's good to have Caleb Martin and Kelly Hooper surrounding him because that's going to also not just help Paul George and Tyrese Maxey, but to help Joel Embiid too. See, something somebody told me to DFJ Hoops, Andre said they have not built the right team around Joel Embiid. And I kind of, you know, understand that. Joel Embiid has not made out the second round. Yes, I understand that. I've even talked about how Joel Embiid is, you know, can't be put in certain talks because he hasn't made out the second round. I don't look at him as a superstar because he ain't won a championship yet. But if you talk about the last few years, you had a Ben Simmons 
and you had a James Harden as your second options, where James Harden was hurt the last year in Philadelphia, right? So much that he got released off the team. And then you had uh, Ben Simmons, as y'all see right now, don't even, is not even interested in playing basketball. Now, I don't know the specifics on everybody that's been on the Sixers, but as far as Andre is concerned and DFJ Hoops, he said that the Sixers never really built a team around Embiid. I beg to differ. I think 2019 they built around Embiid and Ben Simmons with Jimmy Butler and J.J. Redick and Tobias Harris. I think that was their best team. But, you know, other than that, there hasn't been a lot of... His second options ain't really been the best. This is Embiid's best second option and third option. So, Paul George last night had a, a game where he scored 15 points. Shot four for 16 from the field, one for seven from the three, had five rebounds, four assists, and six turnovers. Now, you have to watch the games to understand about how the games went. Now, in watching last night, in Paul George's debut, he actually did things on the court that really helped the Sixers be able to be in that position. First of all, people don't even realize even watch the games. Devin Booker was inefficient his damn self. And Paul George, as I've already told y'all before, every time he sees Devin Booker, he sees blood. Now, offensively, he may have not been cooking the ass with 30 points, but he damn sure shut down Devin Booker in that first quarter. And go look at the numbers and what Devin Booker had and how inefficient he was throughout the game. So, that was something that PG did. He also playmaked for Tyrese Maxey and Kelly Oubre and uh, Gershon Yavaselli to hit open three-point shots, right? So he's able to defend, rebound, and play make when Tyrese Maxey wants to be off the ball. So you do that, and you have all those ingredients, and it's your first game getting your conditioning back. Yeah, his shooting, his shooting numbers weren't the best. They were actually pretty, you know, bad. He didn't shoot the ball well. I feel like he made some bonehead turnovers. I think the thing about Paul George, you know, with him constantly throwing for them offensive fouls and reaching for the ball, that that's something that they're going to have to correct. And that's something that Paul George is going to have to get within himself to focus and not, you know, and pay attention to detail. So I think that's that's one thing with him. But, you know, other when people in casuals keep saying, oh, look, he didn't play well, he didn't play this, he missed the game when he shot. First off, Y'all grill them, you grill the nigga for not being aggressive enough and not wanting the last shot or not wanting to take over. He takes the last shot he misses, oh, he's selfish. And a lot of y'all just showing a lot of y'all, like, you know, double standards and ignorance when it comes to, you know, IQ and basketball. Do you want to be aggressive or do you want to be passive? I, I, I don't know what you want him to do. And, and like I said, um, I thought he, you know, basically did not shoot the ball well. But I have to be honest, I, I would give him either a C- minus or a D plus last night. And, um, you know, he put it on himself that he has to play better. So, you know, he plays us on Wednesday. You know, I will be, I will be definitely applauding for him because all the stuff he's done for the team. And, uh, you know, I ain't going to be doing all that dumb shit. All, oh, you know, he ain't did this. He ain't what it's like. It's just, y'all know my, my stance on that. Right? I'm going to I'm going to applaud for him, cheer for him when he, you know, gets his, you know, tribute video, but when he's on those two hours he plays against, he's our enemy, after the game, I'm still going to be having love for PG, that's how it's going to be, but as far as Sixers go, they have a lot of different things that they can work with, and they have a lot of good, good um, veterans on that team, and they got, you know, solid, solid pieces around Embiid, now, as far as Joel Embiid goes, for him, and people are asking me, well, how this chemistry is going to go between him, Maxie, and PG. Joel Embiid has to take the, the onus that you don't have to score 30, 35 points now. You got the MVP. You've been the leading scorer in the league. You don't need to be the guy to have to score baskets. Some You need to be taking a step back offensively and focusing more on how you're going to help your teammates elevate. You're 31 years old now. Now it's about you helping your team to get better. Now it's about winning. It's not about your numbers, even though the numbers don't come to you because you're just, you know, who you are, Joel Embiid. You don't have to now average 32 points and shoot like 25, 30 shots. You don't need to do that anymore. You got a guy in Tyrese Maxey 
who can't nobody can stay in front of with the ball in his hands. Arguably the fastest person with the ball in his hands next to De'Aaron Fox, right? Maybe John ja Morant. And then you got Paul George, who's an elite two-way player who can knock down open shots, who can score the, with the best of them, and who can lock down the other side. So you don't need all this to really, you don't want to take away from what guys do best. If I was Joel Embiid, I would focus on a lot more on the defensive end and protecting the rim and being a force and putting fear in other centers. And something else I'm gonna say to y'all before I end off, off here. I think that whole Joel Embiid with that reporter touched, you know, touched not just the Sixers, but the rest of the NBA players. And I think they're gonna use that as motivation. I think Joel Embiid's gonna use that as motivation to you and to be dominant. That's why I truly believe. You'd be amazed about many people, how, what things will motivate somebody, right? So um, I think the Sixers are gonna be a bumpy road starting off, of course, but as far as their team and how their team is and how it's built, I mean, I like how their team is built. They got a, a they got an upcoming star point guard. They got an elite two-way uh, all-star. They got solid toughness around these players that can play defense. The only question mark I said I said is the four position is Caleb Martin and uh, going to be big enough or he gonna, is he going to be able to handle bigger uh, point power forwards and get shot yourself? Is he, gonna, is he ready to, to make take that position? That's it. Other than that, there's really nothing the Sixers don't really have on this team. I still got them going to the conference finals, right? And I still got them competing to, you know, make it to the NBA finals. So that's why I got with the Eastern Conference finals with the Sixers. But until next time, pull up and see pull up, check, pull up, peace, out of here, like, swim, wow.